Good afternoon and welcome to the Sol TV presentation at Industry Ignited Forecasting 2016. This is a very exciting time of year for many reasons. Number one, we're sort of in that in-between stage between Christmas and New Year's and a lot of businesses are planning for the upcoming year. Yeah, absolutely. Evaluating what went well in 2015 and how we can make things go better in 2016 and for years to come. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Josh Ellsworth and this is Zach Ellsworth and we'll be your host today. And we've conducted research and solicited information and feedback and trends and predictions from a variety of people, uh, not only throughout Stalls, but the sponsors of Stalls TV mm -hmm. uh, to bring you today's class where we're going to look forward to what 2016 may hold, also look back at a little bit of 2015 and ultimately uh, report on trends in three major categories. Number one is we'll step through apparel and we'll even reference some specific styles of apparel that you may want to look for that's trending now or new styles coming out this year mm -hmm. uh, from some of our sponsors and then in general we'll talk uh, in depth about decoration and what we can expect from a decoration standpoint some of the stuff that's coming out mm -hmm. and then ultimately uh, the last section will be business growth just some of the uh, things impacting the industry may impact you and your business in 2016 uh, that you'll want to be aware of. Yeah, so it should be an exciting segment, segment for you today. And we do welcome your questions as we go throughout. We do have uh, our video production manager, Joe Kaczynski, with us today who will feed us your questions as they come in. So if you have questions as we review what we're forecasting in 2016, please type that in and we will do our best to answer those questions for you. Good. So let's jump over to our apparel section. And we're going to move over to the PowerPoint for this. I want to walk through um, some different looks that we've pulled from several different websites that are out there and show those to you. So number one, um, and this was uh, reported to us by Sanmar, in particular, Holly Rocks has been uh, preaching this on Sanmar's behalf, is that athleisure uh, is evolving. So athleisure has been a trend that's been well reported for the past several years. And now it's, it's not only a mainstay where people want to wear uh, comfortable clothes uh, to work that they can also wear to the gym, but we're starting to see some styling evolve out of athleisure. In particular, uh, color blocking is one of those big things that we've seen come on strong here in fall 2015, and we expect to see a lot more of this in 2016. Yeah, and um, it goes beyond Sanmar as one of the leading blank suppliers here in the U.S. into the retail stores, which is why athleisure has really taken off. We have brands out there like Lululemon, uh, like Myogrid, uh, even Nike and Under Armour are getting on board with what athleisure is. Obviously, Sanmar being one of the largest suppliers for us uh, gives us the opportunity to decorate those athleisure garments with a variety of different decorating technologies. But athleisure, as we've reported in other broadcasts, has really been reported on in the Wall Street Journal as a major business trend. It's accounting for billions of dollars in sales right now in the apparel market. Yeah, absolutely. So these are just a couple new styles that uh, Sanmar's coming out that sort of can be categorized as athleisure and also uh, speak to the color blocking trend. The one I uh, in particular like is the District Juniors garment you're seeing on screen there, and uh, that's available from Sanmar.com. So the next thing uh, that we're seeing when it comes to blank apparel is, this is everywhere, is texture in textiles. Not, not only actual uh, texture that you can feel with your hand, but texture that you can see and it's often more of an aesthetic uh, texture than it is an actual uh, physical texture to the fabric. Yeah, again, we are taking our cues here from the retail market. Uh, if you walk through any local department store, whether that's Walmart, Target, anything like that, uh, Old Navy, you are going to see this texture in textiles. And we'll talk about it in one of the other trends uh, that's happening here. Actually, I think it's in our, in our very next one. But this texture is um, being achieved through a mix of what is actually making up these particular textiles. So you can see there on the screen that you have a marbled fleece, which is 85% cotton, 15% poly. The tri-blend, which is absolutely taking off, and we can kind of discuss some of those challenges, but it's a mix of poly cotton and rayon. And then you have slub cotton, which has really started to take off this fall in the oversized jersey market. Yeah, and it's almost just an inconsistent cotton, right? It just adds some uh, different appeal to the garment, a different texture. Um, ultimately, from a, from a decoration standpoint, which is what we like to speak to on Stalls TV, we need to be uh, really concerned uh, when it comes to the tri-blend in particular because you start to enter in uh, polyester and rayon into the mix. You can have some issues with heat sensitivity, so just taking special uh, precaution with using low temp 
uh, heat transfers, which we'll cover um, a bit later in the decoration. Yeah, in the decoration segment of this, absolutely. And uh, not all tri blends are created equally. So if this is a trend that you're going to get on in 2016, make sure you're shopping for the one that matches up well with your particular decorating method. So the least amount of rayon possible if you're a heat printer. Yep, absolutely. So I'm just going to pull it back to the previous slide. If you want to take down any style numbers, the particular styles you see here from left to right on your screen is we have a garment uh, Cavio, which is a California supplier. They're very forward thinking and trending. Uh, trendy in a lot of the styles they release, not only for juniors, but for ladies and young girls. So their sizes run the full gamut. We'll see several other garments throughout the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to the Sanmar uh, ladies digi stripe fleece jacket that you see there, which I personally decorated, was a breeze to heat print. Um, the, the one on the far right is a uh, Bella Canvas garment, which is that marble fleece. And it's interesting, this particular style from Bella Canvas not only comes in the marble fleece, but it comes in an acid wash, which also helps to show texture, and it comes some colors in a tri-blend. So you start to get mm -hmm. a mix of fabrics all into the same construction of shirt. Yeah, and if you're looking uh, in the sporting goods side, Holloway has a lot of great options with texture in their, in their textiles. Yep, absolutely. So the next thing we want to report on here are color blends and stripes. So we're seeing the ombre uh, print just fading from a dark to a light color, uh, not only in footwear, but we're seeing that in apparel pretty much in design across the board. So if we look on the left-hand side of your screen, we have a new dip dye uh, tee from Sanmar that's a V-neck style tee, and we're starting to see this trend throughout. So you can get ombre from an apparel side, you can get it in decoration if you're utilizing digital print technology, but just seeing colors uh, blend and fading from one to another is something that's popular. Yeah, absolutely, and it's always been a challenge in your graphics to achieve that if you were a screen printer because you're dealing with halftones, but digital printing has really brought that look a long way as far as decorating goes. Yep, absolutely, and then uh, we're seeing on the right here another garment from Cavio. We're just start starting to see a lot of uh, striping. Once again, color blocking, just mixing and matching and combining of colors within the construction of garment pretty much in any way possible, which really opens up the door from a design perspective. Um, something else I want to mention, uh, we're still seeing, although it's not reported in the slideshow, a lot of neutrals and charcoal mm -hmm. uh, colors in the gray family coming out as a, as a typical neutral instead of a white or black. Yep. So just jumping in uh, to those garments can be a big opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. Still sticking uh, in women's fashion here for a moment, uh, fringe. Uh, this has been trending on all your laughing. Uh, yeah. You can't see them right now on camera, but you're laughing. So I was Christmas shopping this year for my wife, and you know I look up the uh, top gift guide ideas on Zappos and all the other um, sites. And fringe in footwear has been coming along for some time in ladies' boots and, and jackets, just in leather or suede constructions mm -hmm. as well. And we're starting to see fringe enter um, not only the blank apparel market with T-shirts um, in, in styles like this, high-low garments, but you're seeing it. Uh, come along in, in dresses in all sorts of different styles. And so Cavio has been the first one that I found that sort of stepped into fringe with a couple different blank styles of garments, both in juniors and young girls. And I think we're going to see this come along. What do you think of this one? Um, it's interesting. I, I don't, um, it takes me back to the 80s a little bit. Yeah. I think so, uh, where you had fringe and things hanging off your jean jacket and, and those types of things, probably giving away my age a little bit uh, with that reference back to the 80s, but pretty much that's the style that's coming back in. My concern uh, or question on these is what challenges do you see decorating fringe? You know, I really don't see a, a challenge, to be honest, as long as the fringe, uh, which can obviously build up in thickness if it's overlapping mm. on top of itself, uh, would just be getting the item flat, the print area flat on the press. So just paying special attention, especially where there's a small print area, to interchange an attachment or use a print perfect pad to get good placement. So I think it's a fairly easy way mm -hmm. to upgrade a style element without adding complexity to printing. Now, of course, um, these garments can come in any fabric construction, and you'll see a lot of the tri-blends um, and the burnouts and, and some of the different fabrics that are a little more heat sensitive. So just paying special attention there as well. Gotcha. I, I, would, I would think that this would make threadability just a little bit more difficult because you're not dealing with a solid, at least on the looks that, that we have here on the slide. Um, you're not dealing with a solid at the bottom, so the fringe could actually slide up underneath of your shirt. So we probably want to watch out for that as well. All right, we'll make it a point to order in some of these garments. Yeah, show you how to, show you how to print. And experiment with them. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is more of a men's fashion uh, standpoint, and it's just showing that this color blocking 
uh, goes throughout, not only in raglan sleeves, but in hoodie style, where we're starting to see uh, garments separated in any way possible uh, vertically um, with different blocks of color. And this isn't, uh, this is something that you can see anywhere, whether mm -hmm. it's Under Armour, Nike, uh, in your local Dick's Sporting Goods. We're seeing in athletic, you're seeing a lot of this different color blocking. And even in athletic styled uh, ladies' garments like Victoria's Secret pink site, you're seeing the oversized shirts done in these two tones. Yeah, and if you walk into, uh, which I did this past weekend, into an American Eagle store, it was all color blocked mixed with the textures that we're seeing in the textiles as well. So the textures were actually color blocked too. Yep, so, and then the last point is the joggers are kind of transforming and have been for some time where you're getting more of a tapered fit down towards the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, the Blank Apparel Marketplace is finally starting to come along and meet that trend with Pennant Sportswear launching a uh, throwback jogger that you see there on the right of your screen that's a little more tapered. I think these would be great to try out uh, maybe on a basketball team at a high school this season and see how they respond because it's certainly trending. Yeah, it definitely is, and it's not just for on the court or warm-ups as well. It kind of ties into that athleisure trend that we're talking about because you do see these in uh, fashion retail stores like the Gap, Banana Republic, those types of stores are selling these blank uh, throwback joggers as well. Good, and the last slide I have here on blank apparel that I want to point out for uh, this section of our reporting before we take some questions is what I call superhero performance. So okay. you're seeing it on the screen there, but you're getting what's coming down the road here uh, for MyoGrid in 2016 as we look forward to MyoGrid, which has been a pretty progressive company uh, in general with their standard line, which we see on the far left and the far right. Mm -hmm. But we start to look towards the center of this slide, and you're seeing this sort of superhero look that's, uh, once again, driven from a retail standpoint where you have companies like Under Armour printing, uh, even even Batman logos and mm -hmm. Captain America logos on shirts that are selling like hotcakes. Well, you can drive this just into a blank wearable through this circular knitting uh, that's used to construct MyoGrid. Yeah, and the uh, the circular knitting goes towards the performance characteristics of uh, this particular fabric. It, it eliminates basically chafing in all of those key areas because you're not going to have seams up and down. Uh, your garment, but decorating these items, again, pay close attention to fabric content because the performance wear uh, scope of where fabric is going is different all the way across the board from one major retailer or manufacturer to another, including MyoGrid, which is actually mostly a nylon base compared to the polyesters of the Nikes and the Under Armors. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, it's not only superhero performance from a look, but to your point, superhero performance from how the garment acts when somebody's wearing it. Mm -hmm. So you get these uh, vented zones, you get these zone compression areas, ultimately you get a superior construction with the nylon and the longevity of it, and you get the seam-free uh, construction, which really uh, we're starting to see folks invest more and more, not just for travel ball, mm -hmm. but even at the high school level in uh, base layer compression because of what's been driven out there in retail. They're willing to pay for these looks, so you might as well jump on and sell them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we look forward to big things from the MyoGrid line in particular for 2016 and performance wear as a whole, which we'll get into momentarily. So our next area that we want to dive into um, is decoration. But before we do that, Joe, are any questions coming in? No, I have no questions at this time. Okay, excellent. So I'm sure we'll start to get some more questions in the decoration section yeah. because we have about five or six slides planned for you, and I'm sure the discussion will go on from there. The first slide that I want to show you is full color meets freestanding text. And this is number one um, on decoration, and it's number one for a reason. This is brand new. Um, the idea that now we can take a full color graphic, similar to what we could achieve through a printer cutter machine in the past, and get all the benefits of digital, which full color is trending, and we see it, you'll see full color throughout these predictions, and now we can get fine detail. So if you look on your screen on that graphic that's been applied um, sort of throughout the production workflow and look at the very last uh, image sort of in the middle of your screen where the white paper's peeling away, look at the fine detail text for that left chest graphic that's freestanding. This is possible by new transfer technology called stretch litho. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what it is is a combination of a digital print process and a traditional screen print process. However, the adhesive that is being used for this particular product is part of that performance wear push of low temperature application. So the stretch litho product 
actually applies as low as 275 degrees Fahrenheit, so you can put it on those performance polyesters. Yeah, so 2016, I have no doubt that this will become a top transfer product out there in the industry. Yeah. And, and the reason why is it solves a couple big challenges, okay? Customers have their logo, they want their logo, they mm -hmm. really don't want modifications to this, and this really allows you to maintain the integrity of the logo which in turn should drive uh, corporate sales in particular, or even teamware sales yeah. for decorators in 2016 where we're not having to coach them into a different process. We can give them exactly what they want with Stretch Litho, regardless of color count. Yeah, absolutely. Color uh, becomes a non-issue. And the way that the product is delivered, I do have a sample sheet here from Transfer Express. You can see we have a number of different logos ganged up on this particular sheet, so we can take multiple customer logos with uh, a completely different color gamut, put it on the same sheet, the same real estate, and get an inexpensive transfer, realize the quantities of scale that screen printing offer to us. Yeah, which is a big deal. So CAD prints, uh, we still see growth there, uh, which if you don't know what CAD prints is, it's just a digital transfer um, available from stalls where you can order a very low quantity and customize in full color onto practically anything, yep. which still has a lot of power in and of itself, uh, and will continue growth, but this stretch litho, fills that economy of scale uh, price point. So if you get a 500 piece full color order, boom, there's a solution regardless of the logo. Yeah, absolutely. And it's gonna stick to most of those fabrics. So if you're dealing in the corporate world and they're taking on the athleisure trend and looking for performance wear polos, you can decorate it, you can get that fine detail text, you can get full color. Okay, so uh, if you wanna go back to the slide for just a moment for us, Joe. Uh, you may want to take down that web address. It's a, this is a development and a new product release from transferexpress.com. You can visit transferexpress.com backslash stretch dash litho uh, to learn more about the product and go from there. Folks, see it as a big All right. So next, and we just did a class um, on this. Um, I want to say it was December. It was earlier this month on laser cutting, and we really see 2016 being a year where customers either invest in laser cutters mm -hmm. for processing heat transfer films or put their laser cutter to use if they already own one for processing heat transfer films. So if you get a chance to, I, I'd recommend you attend the classes under our Stalls TV yep. uh, event archive. You can just visit stallstv.com to gain access. But look at this. Basically what we're doing is we are greatly reducing the labor in the process, helping to eliminate weeding. So if we look at the top left image on your screen where you see the bulldog's text, you notice all of the cavities that I would normally have to weed out of my heat transfer film are blown through. Mm -hmm. If I look below that, uh, this is actually a customer image supplied on the Stalls TV forum. You can see that bicycle, which is about a uh, four by three inch print, if I remember correctly. And look at all the spokes that are either blown out or etched away through the process. So the idea is with a laser cutter, I can set up my art, as you see in the preview screen up in the top right. I can set up areas that the machine etches away, and I can also blow through larger cavities to create, basically just weed the outside edge. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and 10 years ago, laser technology existed, but you couldn't pull this off because of the evolution of the heat transfer films that we're currently manufacturing. We've moved from PVC-based materials to polyurethane-based materials, which allows you to cut within uh, your laser cutter confinement and not worry about the toxic fumes that would come off of a PVC burning. So you're just burning away the polyurethane. Yeah, and just to uh, uh, tout innovation a little bit, Stahls invented the first uh, CAD cut material, which happened to be thermofilm, uh, the first green polyurethane based material out there in the market. And you mm -hmm. can still, you can laser cut thermofilm back then. It was ahead of its time. Yep. Still one of our most popular products you can laser cut today, along with the vast majority of our line that's polyurethane based. Um, so if we go back to that slide, the other thing that we can do with laser cutting is in addition to just our standard graphics, if we look at the very bottom left hand of the screen and the image directly to the right, the uh, gentleman's face that actually created this and the car, um, you get some photo processing now out of heat transfer films. <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't, just looking at these pictures, if you weren't telling me that, I would never believe that that is a CAD cut, but I have seen these transfers up close and personal, and it's amazing what you can do with a laser cutter and CAD cut films. Yeah, so guess who has a laser cutter on the way for Stalls TV Studios? Uh, hopefully us. Yeah, so All we'll right. be inventing some, um, some new stuff. We've partnered with Universal Laser. Uh, and 2016 is gonna be a big year where we teach you how to process heat transfer films and get even cooler graphics, finer detail out of CAD cut film. And this changes the game in two ways. One, I can do graphics I couldn't do before. And two, 
I bring the CAD cut quantity closer, um, higher up to screen printing as far as where it makes sense because I pull the majority of the labor out of it. Yeah, absolutely. With weeding. Um, and I think you'll see um, some additional innovation as far as uh, production tools to make CAD cut easier uh, throughout the course of 2016. All right, so this is one of my favorites because the shoe platen concept in the top right um, happened, I want to say, five or six years ago at this point. Probably, yeah. When uh, we launched the shoe platen to market. And then uh, the hat bill platen was an innovation that happened in 2015 where we're pressing on the underbills of hats. Mm -hmm. And then the can koozie platen. So basically, um, the idea is that I can heat print anything with the heat press. If you can come up with it, the idea is it's possible. So let's talk about what to expect from heat presses in 2016. Well, I think that we can expect innovation from people who actually have them, who are looking for creative ways to decorate new items or items that they manufacture. A lot of the um, custom platens that we end up making at the Hotronics facility are for manufacturers who come up with a new item, a Shark Tank-like item that yeah. needs to come to market and they need a way to personalize it or to decorate it, and the custom platens come out of that. Uh, one of the ways that our general consumers benefit is sometimes we can take those platens and then, you know, uh, sell them to the general public because that item hits the mainstream. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think we'll see more uh, from a placement, from a design standpoint. Ultimately, um, heat presses are going to continue to evolve. And if you're not into a threadable heat press, you mm. need to get into one because there's going to be more and more items that you can heat print in 2016. Um, things we've never seen before, odds are. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the uh, just the fact that the platen is interchangeable. That used to take 15 to 20 minutes with tools in, what was it, early 2015, late 2014, Hotronics launched the uh, quick change platen that gives you the ability to change those in about 15 seconds. So a single shop can just stock all these platens and, and switch out within 15 seconds and print new items. Yeah, fun fact, threadability with the Hotronics Fusion uh, hit the market in 2010. Um, and here we are, we have the quick change, we have more platens than ever, so we're reaching the, uh, I wouldn't say plateau, but we're still climbing on the versatility right. and what you can actually make with the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you lead this one if we can go over to the slideshow. Um, this is your sure. favorite. Yeah, it's the, um, I don't wanna say the invention because it's not, but we, we've termed it the super transfer. And it's based on the idea that Basically, when um, rock groups would break up and then the key members would get back together in different groups, they formed a super group. So what we did is we took different types of transfers, put them together, called it a super transfer. And one of the newest, fastest growing ways to do that is with sublimation and you basically name the other transfer. As long as there is polyester involved, 65% polyester, sublimation can combine uh, with that material to create a super transfer. Some of the looks that you see there, the one on the top right hand corner, the lion, is a combination of sublimation and a textured polyester twill um, that Stalls has available that you can order prints of. The one on the bottom left hand corner is sublimation combined with white glitter flake, which is probably where this trend is really growing because it hits some of the growing markets that you see across the bottom, the spirit wear, the hair bows, the oversized garments. Yeah, so I think um, 2016 will be even bigger here. We're going to mm -hmm. see decorators take hold of this concept, which is fairly new mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, sort of second half of the year 2015. Um, the idea in 2015, we have a desktop sublimation printer that's reliable, which is the Sawgrass Virtuoso that we're looking at on screen. Yes. So we finally have a reliable uh, printer and ink set that's designed for it that we can invest in, feel confident in. Mm -hmm. and. Decorators are going to create, um, you know, this starts with twill, this starts with glitter, um, put adhesive on the back of a polymer or polyester based product, mm -hmm. and I can't imagine by the end of this year what we'll be having uh, to decorate apparel. But I think there's a ton of growth here because it allows sublimation and full color and everything that you can do to start to translate onto dark colored fabrics and a variety of items that aren't uh, polyester based themselves. Right, and we're also seeing this super transfer trend and just adding pops of glitter to other items, which in one of our Stalls TV morning shows, we had, uh, what was it, a battle of the decorating ideas, yeah. and Courtney got to show us 
how to add a pop of bling to a full color digital transfer to where the digital was on the bottom and she added glitter to the top of that. So that is trending as well in 2016, being added to some major retailers' catalogs. Yeah, I mean, you see, we've talked about mixed media for forever, as long as yeah. I have been here and can remember. But I think we're finally seeing where mixed media is becoming production friendly. Mm -hmm. um, and you're starting to see materials reach sort of their peak in development to where they can be heat applied very quickly for base layers. You can layer other materials. So I think we'll start to see some production efficiencies uh, driven out of mixed media applications to where materials are really developed and designed to be mixed and married with other materials to get really cool looks. Absolutely. Okay. So the next one I want to go over is applique evolves. So um, this is worth noting that uh, you know digital, digital, digital everywhere. So the the right images you see are actually a digitally printed um, material out of a solvent or eco solvent based printer. In theory, it could be a sublimated panel of glitter as well. Um, We've sewn a satin stitch and completed our popular now rip away applique method, which was introduced a couple years back. Yep. And so we used to just do this with basic glitter flake, but now we have customers that are doing it with uh, printable materials, basically printing whatever color of applique they want, including patterns and photographic images. You see the pictures of the dogs in the bottom right one for the rescue shelter. And then even on the left, now we're allowing the embroiderer to do reflective. So there is no such thing as reflective thread that's ANSI certified, but there is 3M reflective that you can use with your embroidery machine as an applique material. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have seen, seen a general decline in the request for direct embroidery and uses for embroidery machines, especially as all of these other trends that we're talking about in apparel come around because it's very difficult to uh, direct embroider polyesters, the lighter fabrics, they, it just get, embroidery gets too heavy. Right. So by introducing this heat transfer film that can be sewn with a satin stitch and then ripped away, we really open up the doors for those of you who already own embroidery equipment to make more money in 2016. Yeah, it's all about profit per hour and really getting down to that measurement um, on how much money can I make with my equipment and applique, especially higher end finishes and mm -hmm. applique and higher end blanks that we're decorating help to push that profit per hour and really help us to maximize our production throughput per head, per heat press, per station, whatever it is. Yeah, and again, when you introduce the digital portion into that, color begins to not matter anymore where you're not charging however many cents per thousand threads. It's your satin stitch around it and you can add as many colors on the interior as you want. Good. So rip away applique continues to grow in 2016, and I'm sure there's things we're not thinking of, but applique in general um, will continue uh, to grow and take over. Mm -hmm. um, the next one I want to share with you is uh, this one's kind of a fun slide because sublimation goes wild, and we're seeing this everywhere. We're hearing this everywhere where sublimation is on fire, meaning fully sublimated blanks that are cut and sew, um, available from a wide variety. Uh, of suppliers and companies right now where we're able on the left hand side fully leverage the power of sublimation by sublimating the raw goods and basically bringing them to market either fully sublimated with the customization or as we see in the top right hand corner um, sublimated to a point uh, where it's ready to accept uh, post embellishment on the garment. Now to frame this the problem has been for decorators is finding something to print on these popular sublimated fabrics. And I think 2016 is going to be the year that we finally have a 100% guaranteed reliable material mm -hmm. for pressing onto any sublimated fabric without bleed through with your heat press. Yeah, exactly right. So the issue with the sublimation inks is um, an excessive amount of heat is what activates them. It's the beauty of sublimation, why people actually want to use it, because you can't feel it on the garment. It actually becomes one with the polyester fibers of the garment. But when you are decorating on top of that polyester fiber, you obviously are applying heat to it again if you're putting names, numbers, something like that uh, on it. So it has a tendency to activate the ink again. And even through the wash and the dry cycle of an item going through the dryer, it can have a tendency to activate that ink. So you either need an extremely thick material, which sometimes, most of the time, isn't desirable on performance wear, or one that gives you the ability to block that dye migration or inhibit that dye migration from coming through that is soft and stretchable, which is on the way in 2016. Yeah, and I'm pumped about that one. So yeah. that's all I can say, but sublimation will get tamed in 2016, <laughs> and I'm pumped about it. Uh, the other thing before we leave that slide, if we can just flip back to it real quick, um, we have the socks 
-hmm. and the accessory items that have been really popular in sublimation, I think that's worth uh, mentioning here as well. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, sublimated socks have just been flying off the shelf thanks to uh, one, NBA players wearing them. It's, it's, uh, it's a big hit with celebrities as well, so they are pushing the demand for that. And Foot Locker has actually gone so far to offer personalized sublimated socks in some of their uh, larger stores. So they're commanding anywhere between $25 to $35 a pair for these socks. And it costs you with a sublimation printer ink in the transfer. With the sock, you're under 5 bucks for making this. So there's a lot of profit potential in 2016 in sublimated socks. One other item that people are sublimating, it combines with that under the bill platen and the super transfer. We're sublimating Glitter Flake to put under the bill completely of um, caps to where you get a full color glitter decoration underneath the, the bill of a cap with sublimation as well. Yeah, and the arm sleeves are popular as well. So just yeah. sublimating any accessories and once again, just being able to print practically anything and leveraging mixed media and technology for mm -hmm. what it's good for. Okay, the next slide that um, I want to show you, we've tagged as the glaze craze. Okay, so we launched um, our Stalls Tech line of material. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say it was 2014 now, but one of those products that we're seeing on the very bottom left there on the black shirt uh, was called Super Tech Matte Clear. Well, Super Tech Matte Clear, not only can you print and cut it, but you're seeing it here just cut, weeded, and heat applied to a garment, and it gives that laser etched finish. Um, it had a counterpart that's our gloss material that you see on the run design. Um, we're seeing customers use this gloss material and these transparent materials to layer and create unique looks. In this case, it's layered on top of the neon pink material to give it that wet effect. And uh, just uh, the idea of applying a heat transfer film as a glaze either directly on top of the garment or on top of other media, uh, we think is going to be tremendously popular in 2016. Yeah, and again, this one is thanks to our customers. We developed a material that was going to be printable and soft on white and light shirts. Our customers took it and made it a top layer and basically created a new use or a new product um, out of this particular product to where you don't even have to have a printer to make use of it. Yep, yep, absolutely. And the one you're looking at on the right and the bottom, uh, the right side, basically we're looking at some transparent uh, sequins that come in a sheet that you can trim and apply over sections of your shirt or design. And then in the bottom right, we're looking at a new product you can expect to see sometime here at the beginning of 2016, which does uh, brings the uh, color shift metallics uh, to the glaze game where I can apply this on top of lighter dark fabrics, other mm -hmm. heat transfer films, and get some really cool effects. Um, we, have it sublim we have it applied to a, one of the sublimated uh, Sanmar camo hex garments in that photo example. Okay. All right, Joe, we getting any questions coming in? There is a question concerning uh, the stretch litho, wanting to know if it will stick to a nylon-based garment. Right now, the stretch litho is just cotton and polyester. Correct. Um, if you have a nylon-based garment, um, if it's not going to be laundered, I'd say it's likely that it will stick. We would recommend that you test that uh, independently. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's going to be laundered, I would probably steer away from nylon uh, where possible. Yeah, and you can look at the CAD Prince line of products for, uh, to solve that issue, to apply to the nylons. Okay. All right, so that covers a little bit of where we see uh, decoration trending in general. Mm -hmm. um, by and large, we see uh, customization, personalized products still um, having unbelievable growth. Um, everything that we see uh, here at Stalls suggests that uh, performance wear and products for performance wear are going to continue uh, to rise, and we'll touch a little more on mm -hmm. that in our next section, uh, which is business growth. So the business growth section um, is designed to talk more about industry trends and what to expect um, overall, and really some disruptive technology that you need to be aware of out in the industry. And so we'll start it off with our slide that says performance or bust. And what we're saying here is that if you're a decorator, it's 2016, okay? Yeah. Maybe in 2009, you had a choice on whether or not I was going to print performance wear. Mm -hmm. It's 2016, you, had, you either print performance wear or odds are you better have a really nice niche business and something else, or you're gonna be struggling uh, to keep up. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the growth in performance wear, which you can kind of see there on your screen, this is just for the Sport Tech Posi Charge to your growth, especially in the youth segment. We've seen a growth of close to 140% in sales of those types of garments. And can you just give us a quick overview of what the Posi Charge means? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So these, uh, once again, this is from Sanmar, who's a great partner of Stalls TV. They provided this data uh, mm -hmm. for us to share. 
uh, with you so you can see the growth. But Posi Charge basically means this is their line of performance wear fabrics that are available in many different constructions that are manufactured with uh, a cationic polyester mm -hmm. that is not going to bleed. So I don't have to worry about any bleed through. So basically it gives the decorator peace of mind to use the decoration they want without having to worry about bleeding or dye migration. And you know, so you see a lot of growth because of that, mm -hmm. but honestly people are just paying a little bit more for this garment because they don't want to worry about a return after they send it mm -hmm. out the door. <laughs> um, so we see a lot of growth not only in the uh, youth line there, but the men's line, which had a fairly good base still growing, and the mm -hmm. ladies line, of course. So I would definitely show uh, performance wear in your offering to every type of customer, whether it's in sports, in the corporate world, promotional, whatever it may be. So performance wear or bust. Okay. So talk to us a little bit about uh, being craft conscious, which is our next slide. Craft conscious. This one has been trending actually for a while and most of you out there, we had a poll question uh, before our broadcast launched and a lot of you haven't been in business for a year, maybe just over a year. A lot of Stahl's customers started in business as crafters. They did it for fun. You can see on the left hand side of your screen, top left, the Silhouette Cameo Cutter. That cutter and the cutter that is made by uh, a company called Cricut. Uh, which is the one just below it, the Cricut Explore, really open up the market. There are literally tens of thousands of people who are investing in vinyl cutting technology every month. And that's not at the commercial level, that's at the craft level. These cutters are being sold on uh, Home Shopping Network, QVC. They're being sold from television. And people are going out and buying sheets at Joanne Fabric or Michael's Craft Store or whatever craft store that's around you. And they're doing this as a hobby. However, a lot of people were turning this hobby into some type of small business. Usually that's when they call us at Stalls to you know, increase their growth and learn how they can actually grow the business, but sometimes they like to keep it small. So it's a challenge for those on the commercial level who have storefronts who aren't working out of their home to kind of compete with this uh, crafter that is out there making, making items. Yeah, so the implications really uh, for a storefront or a large business is that um, you have a very creative group who creates quality stuff typically if they're mm -hmm. using a heat press instead of a home iron. Um, it's typically quality stuff that um, basically you need to be able to, um, one, is uh, step up your creativity and mm -hmm. invest more time into coming up with innovative designs because the crafter in general is very innovative with what they do. Yep. And um, you see it on the Etsy marketplace and a lot of different marketplaces. Um, and oftentimes, uh, to your point, whether it's because they're not calculating it accurately or they don't know how, or just because it's more of a hobby and less of a business, there's not necessarily a financial obligation every month, mm -hmm. often the price points are a little bit lower. And so if you're seeing price pressure as a large decorator, you want to figure out some creative ways uh, mm -hmm. to combat this, knowing that there is a whole host of folks that are doing this. Um, from a craft side of things uh, for fun um, that you're selling against. Yeah, and a lot of these crafters are the ones who are coming up with a lot of the mixed media, the super transfers um, that, that you see because they're doing it with a home iron. They don't have to worry about applying things multiple times because they're just applying uh, the area that, that they need to. And you saw on the slide there in the top right hand corner that there was actually a pillow that was decorated. So it's these creative applications that crafters are out there doing that allow them to enter the market and hit the home decor market as well as t-shirts. Okay, and then let's approach it from the other side. If you're a crafter that is working to have a full-time decoration business, mm -hmm. uh, what we would encourage you to really do is build a uh, sustainable business based off of pricing that's going to allow you to scale and grow. Ultimately, if you plan to make this into a business, if it's more than just a hobby for you and you want a real uh, income out of it, just um, accounting for things like um, overhead, and labor costs and everything that goes into creating something mm -hmm. and charging accurately for that. So um, really it's, it's from both sides. It's just to be aware that there's this influx of very creative decorators that are doing a fantastic job Absolutely. Um, that you need to understand that's out there. And if you're coming from that side, just being able to uh, really take the time to turn it into a business and learn about cost calculations. And of course you can do all those things at Stalls TV where we have videos to help you with that. Um, there's a question uh, that came in, so we'll go ahead and take that. Yes, uh, they want to know what's new in rhinestone designs and cutting templates for 2016. Okay, from a uh, rhinestone standpoint in 2016, 
Um, really, the, the biggest innovation uh, that rhinestones have seen in some time has been the sticky flock, mm -hmm. uh, flock templated material. And that's been around for some time. Um, I don't see, I haven't seen or heard of any big innovation to really automate the do-it-yourself workload for rhinestones mm -hmm. um, unless you invest in the iLine crystal machine, yep. um, which manually places the stones onto your carrier sheet or invest in one of the higher-end CAMS machines for the automated flow, which are really expensive. Yeah. Um, those are pretty much your two choices. Um, but other than that, you know, we're really starting to see, um, well, we've seen folks switch more to glitter um, for their for their fills and outline with rhinestones, that's been around for a while, and really mixing uh, glitter with rhinestones for mixed media designs, we're just gonna see some large companies uh, do that here in 2016. Yeah, I agree, I don't have anything to add to that one. Okay, any other questions at the moment? See, I thought I was gonna be the one coughing the whole time, it's you. No, it's me. All right, it's a rough time to give a live class here. Uh, around winter. the holidays with family that is sick. Yeah, right. so we caught it. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're going to look at is really the demand for speed. And I pulled this uh, image out of Wearables Magazine, which is a great publication uh, for our industry. Uh, and this is their January edition. And I'd recommend you read their trend forecast and everything that they've noted here. We actually have some published articles and ads in this edition. Um, but the point, that the headline here is this was the speed issue. And the spread on the article that you're seeing on the right is rush orders is the new normal. And this usually causes decorators to chuckle when we say, you know, how soon, how quick do your customers want their order or what's the turn time? It's yeah. always yesterday, yeah. right? So in 2016, with the speed of everything, whether it's what they're used to from Amazon or any other major retailer, mm -hmm. I mean, they want things right now. So as a decorator, how do you adjust to give, to shorten your turn time and give things right now? One of the best ways uh, to adjust is to bring as many um, production techniques in-house as you can to where you have it as an option. And it's actually one of the reasons that we encourage folks to partner with stalls is all of the decorating techniques that we encourage you to bring in-house, we can also backfill for you if you get in a bind. So whether that is full color printing, whether that is CAD cut vinyls, having it in-house, having an inventory of colors or materials available to produce on demand is one of the ways to deal with this request for rush orders constantly. Yeah, yeah. So having equipment so you can do a quick turn in-house and mm -hmm. maybe um, a back-end supplier that can do your large quantity. Yep. And I think even from devising your 2016 pricing, um, up front, having a fee associated with quick turn or rush business, or if you're doing heat transfer film, for instance, having a color palette that is available for that quick turn business. That way your sales team and your website can sort of coach people into the styles and colors that you can do quickly. Mm -hmm. And if a customer wants an exception to that role, uh, being able to have uh, some published pricing where we can charge more. But with rush orders being uh, the new normal, I think it's just um, decorators uh, that are small businesses have to be more selective of the jobs mm -hmm. uh, that they take to make sure you're not tying up uh, your time for a, a rush order that's very low profit. Absolutely. And large decorators really need to uh, think of ways that they can recruit uh, quality talent and sort of scale uh, labor production with the peaks and valleys that they may see. Yeah, the, the largest decorators that we deal with, that it's a major challenge. So it's not just for small decorators that, that are challenged with uh, rush orders or just managing the ebb and flow of orders throughout the year. You know, maybe you're big into, maybe your biggest customers are football customers. So you're definitely busy July, August, September, but you might die in December. So it's finding creative ways to also go out and manage that business and build business at those times of year uh, that you're down to where you build predictability into the business. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of larger decorators, and I think we'll see even more of it in, on the mid-sized decorators, are finding a good solid contract partner mm. um, that can handle some of that flux and flow um, of the different um, orders. And uh, you know, you're not just gonna find them that they're gonna wanna print for you during your peak. You're gonna have to gar guarantee them so much uh, capacity right. uh, throughout the year so they can scale to help you. But the idea is being able to have an expanded network of who can create stuff for you. Mm -hmm. So it's not all based on the trained labor you have in-house. Yeah, and one of the things that, that we're going to deal with in a little bit, I think, in, in one of our last trends on business growth is having stock items. Uh, not everything has to be custom. So you can do rush orders that are stock and maybe just have a very small custom piece of it. So uh, design work that allows you to pull something off the shelf and just add a small piece that doesn't require full production. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so our next slide uh, that we want to point out uh, from a business growth standpoint is um, 
online experience. So there's some general, th I mean, this is big. This could be a, mm. a couple hours in and of itself. But uh, let's start with the trend from uh, desktop to mobile. Um, so just yeah. making sure that if you have a, a website or an e-commerce site, that it is uh, mobile friendly. Absolutely. If you are advertising on Facebook, if you're advertising on social media, nine, I don't want to say nine times out of 10, because that's probably an inaccurate number, but over 50% of the time, the person who's looking at that ad and clicking through to your website is on a mobile device. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to have, as you're saying, a site that is at least mobile friendly to get the information that somebody needs. It doesn't mean that they necessarily have to be able to place an order uh, from their phone on your website, but they at least need to have uh, a mobile version to where they can read what is happening on your site and get the information necessary to give you a call. Yeah, absolutely. With the proliferation of, of smartphones and technology at our fingertips, um, it's a no-brainer. So if you're developing a site, uh, make sure that it's mobile friendly. If it's just a Facebook page, guess what? You already have a mobile friendly site. Yep. You get to leverage their development network, which is fantastic, but at least having a way that customers can engage with you um, through a mobile device uh, is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, Next uh, is sort of, I think uh, Team Insight Magazine called it the BSN factor, mm -hmm. but it's not just BSN in the way they're growing in the sporting goods industry, it's, it's how they're selling and how these large uh, sporting goods companies and decorators in general are selling products now. And we can expect more of this in uh, 2016. If we go back to the slide, um, it's the team shops. Um, and the idea of having these uh, flash sale or short sale experience, whether it's for the sports world, the dance world, um, a school fundraiser sale, whatever it might be, this is the new way to sell. Yeah, it absolutely is. And we have seen it um, across all of those different worlds. But it seems to be doing best in the, the team sports world because there is so much administration and management that's required from a coach's or an athletic director's or a parent standpoint to take jersey orders. And what BSN and a lot of their competitors have done is made it um, extremely convenient to just be able to launch a website, have all of your customers or people who are involved in your organization go online, place the order, they do the decorating, they do the sorting, they can ship directly to all of you individually or individually pack and it comes to you. So it's, um, it's a nice thing and it's also a challenge mm -hmm. for those decorators out there who aren't online or have this uh, technology available to them. Yeah, and I think we can take a lot just from the concept of it. Let's say um, I just deal locally and I don't really deal online. Just knowing that there's this um, disruption mm -hmm. of large brands that are selling like this and have the development resources to create like this, and knowing that what does this tool ultimately do? Mm -hmm. and you said a lot of it. It takes the work out of it um, for the athletic director or the coach or whoever mm -hmm. it is. Um, it basically puts the um, responsibility on the decorator to group the orders, close off the sale, print them, ship them with the team, even perhaps making profit um, on a markup so it becomes yeah. more of a fundraiser. fundraiser yeah. So even, even if you do a print piece, um, just having uh, time sales for X period of time and basically making it as easy as possible. So for instance, if you're decorating for um, a dance school and it's close to a dance recital time or any time, just being able to individually bag those orders for each dancer for each player mm -hmm. without having to just bulk ship them. I think just being able to lift some of the workload and, and deliver a better overall sales experience is going to be important as we start to see more uh, of these types of flash sale sites. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I was actually reading an article um, the other day about instead of return on investment, talking about return on experience mm -hmm. and really using a customer experience as a way to grow your business because it's easy to measure stats on return on investment on a particular piece of equipment but how do you actually measure the return on an experience that a customer uh, has with you and it's by word of mouth referral sometimes it's not necessarily measurable but they talked about in the article enchanting your customers to where they actually go out and talk about you so provide a level of service that is above expectation not just customer service interesting yeah. enchanting your customers enchanting Sound your customers very cinderella like it is yeah. All right. The last, uh, the last thing that we have on the slide there is um, the Custom Ink website. And the idea here is uh, Custom Ink, it's, you know, they're pulling out uh, commercial ads, and this is a, a growing company. But the point um, is the online experience and the idea that you can design and create on their website. I've talked to many decorators that say, um, my customers will bring me stuff they designed on Custom Ink and want me to quote it and print it. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, they're, seriously, they're shopping 
uh, yeah. the local price versus the online price. Yep. So I think it's being able to have uh, some sort of design tool so customers can ideate and create on your site and not necessarily do it on a potential competitor site. Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's a few ways to do it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on your site. When you partner uh, with a company like Stalls, you have access to online design software, whether that's the CADWorks Live software that we talk about for vinyl cutting that can be used just as a design tool to show your customers what things are going to look like. You can also visit uh, the Transfer Express designer, and you can throw uh, somebody's um, artwork on a particular garment and actually send it out to them for approval or to send to their customers or create order forms and all different types of things that make it more convenient to them. But it looks like, even though it's not your website, you have the ability to be able to do that. Well, as you're wearing your athleisure and you're going out to your new office at Panera Bread or Starbucks to uh -huh. meet with clients, right, instead of your home, yeah. right, because we do this, um, having your tablet in front of you and being on something like EasyView, uh, which is the Transfer Express design tool mm -hmm. that has a kiosk mode. So being able to sit there with your customer, design on the fly where they don't see pricing, don't see Transfer Express branding, um, I think more of that is going to be important here uh, to 2016. And that's, you know, honestly, that's the real value of Transfer Express, uh, among many things. But in my mind, the idea that uh, when you order from them, sure, you know, I may be able to get it for a nickel less somewhere else or whatever it is. But the idea that I have this art library behind me and I have this sales tool and experience, um, where else is you tools like that to really grow your business. Yeah. It becomes more than just about cost. Yeah. It's about how do I grow and profit. Yeah, and if you want to learn more about that particular uh, piece of the pie at Transfer Express, they do have, I believe, about an hour uh, webinar, much like our Stalls TV classes on their website that you can learn about how that works and see how it can work for you. Yep, absolutely. All right, we have a question, Joe. Fire it away. First comment from Kevin. He just wanted to let you guys know that he has used the CADWorks Live to help close deals for his business. Uh, basically because he could color change and resize. Uh, and, and the font changes that have been made recently are, are wonderful for that. But uh, the question that uh, Matt has is, in doing a custom job, is a week and a half too long for a turn time on that? It depends. <laughs> I, knew, I knew you were going to say <laughs> Yes that. and no. It, it depends. It depends on the decorating method. Um, it depends on your customer's expectation up front. Mm -hmm. And it also depends on where their price quoting you or comparing you to, if you have competitors in the area, what their offer is. In my personal opinion, if it's for a team or something of that nature, a larger organization, I don't think a week and a half is, no, not is, um, is out of the, the realm of possibility. If it's a small run, a walk-up customer, something for you know a birthday gift or something like that, it's probably going to be too long. You're talking more three to five days there, yeah. I think. And you'll know. That's why it's, I think it's important to have two price structure because you're going to have somebody that comes in and says, I need 50 shirts for an event or a walk that we have mm -hmm. this week. Yep. Okay? And it's Tuesday and they need them Friday. Okay? You can make that happen, but it comes with a cost. You have to shift labor. So having that sort of rush price structure or markup mm -hmm. versus a standard is important. But I think a week and a half is totally within the scope of a large order for a local customer. Um, ball yeah. teams usually get much longer than that. Yeah. Um, schools usually get much longer than that. It's really just the sort of retail business that has a quicker turn or the quick um, group orders. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay. Um, any other questions at the moment? Um, so just to speak to the um, CADWorks uh, point, some things you can expect from CADWorks in 2016 are basically a new uh, CADWorks tool. So you can visit CADWorksLive.com uh, to register for free access, but ultimately CADWorks will be launching at, um, in this coming year, and we're tremendously excited because yeah, very excited. it's going to give you um, just a quick preview. You're going to get a little bit of note editing uh, with the Bezier tool mm -hmm. um, in there that's going to be different. You're going to have the ability to ha uh, perhaps have built-in pricing calculators so you can figure out how much it costs to cut as you're creating it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glancing at my cheat sheet here. Um, you're going to have um, a new power clip tool. You're going to have custom color palettes, um, a better vectorizing tool for taking raster art and converting it to vector. So um, some lofty expectations for the new CADWorks. If you yeah. guys are watching, we're much looking forward to it, and our customers are as well. So CADWorks, big things for 2016. Absolutely. All right. The last uh, thing I have here in business growth before we open it up for questions is uh, this was our very first Stalls TV morning show. It was. It was based around this uh, company called Teespring. Mm -hmm. um, we had a good conversation. I'd recommend watching it. It was uh, much longer than we'll have here to discuss it today. But there's something uh, we're sort of tagging as the Teespring effect um, that we see coming up 
um, in the market with the way people sell and are growing the business. So just give a little background about what Teespring is for our viewers. Yeah, where Teespring started um, was basically as a fundraiser where somebody could go on, design a t-shirt, and basically set up their own flash store, but it was a specific design. So there was no customization involved. And the cost to the shirt to them was whatever it was. Let's just say it was $5, and then you set your own sale price. Okay. Um, that grew. Uh, people saw the value in being able to just set a price for t-shirts and have somebody else do the decorating for them. They were good. People realized they were good salespeople online, but they didn't really want to get involved in the decoration side or the production side of it. Actually, much like the whole ASI uh, and PPAI industry is, you have promotional products companies who most of those um, promotional products distributors don't actually make the product, or at least a lot of them didn't five to ten years ago. Right. Uh, they're starting to. But the Teespring gives anybody the ability to design a t-shirt and sell it through their web store, through Facebook, to friends and family, however they want to sell it online and make a profit from it without having to invest in any decorating equipment at all. Right. And then I think the, the one of the key words, it's a very small word, is a t-shirt, Yeah. is the other key thing about the Teespring effect because now... Um, Basically, it's hyper-targeted, and so from a standpoint where um, you know marketing went to very uh, targeted and hyper-targeted mm -hmm. um, advertising um, and then remarketing, um, Teespring leverages all those tools, but not only um, are the tools leveraged to generate a sale, but the design is specific. So we're selling one T-shirt. We're not launching a whole web page where we're selling a collection of shirts. Mm -hmm. We're selling one shirt is, at a time. And what that allows me to do is sort of take that shirt concept and market it to my network of friends on Facebook or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So just the idea of getting a laser focus in your business strategy and approach to different markets is what I think a decorator can take from this. Yeah, absolutely. And if you go on Teespring, they do give you a kind of a listing of what some of the most successful, they call them campaigns, have been over the years. And the ones that are the most successful are the ones that are the most specific and targeted to, to a niche from anywhere from I like watching this TV show and this is a quote from this TV show so I'm making this t-shirt and advertising it those are some of the ones that do the best yeah like what happened last night on The Walking Dead right and maybe there's a shirt all of a sudden as long as there's yeah. no copyright infringement yeah. but the idea it's quick and it's almost like um, gosh I can't think of the word right now um, what do they call it when you print something like for the championship um, that, that ran chase uh -huh. business chase chase business yeah. yeah so just the idea of having um, that quick um, you can react respond to the market, publish a concept up for sale. So figuring out, depending on what your business mm -hmm. is, I think just targeting, um, segmenting your business, sort of deconstructing it by markets and creating looks, campaigns, uh, specific things to market to them, whether it's through a dedicated website, mm -hmm. whether it's through uh, a Facebook campaign, advertising campaign, um, whatever it might be, I think is what we can take from the Teespring effect, as we call it. Yeah. What other questions do we have, Joe? They'd like to know if uh, how does Teespring differ from sites like My Team Shop or Custom Inc., and does Teespring offer performance wear in their choices? Go ahead. All right. So how it differs is um, like a, sh a shop like Custom Inc. is really a place where a um, end customer, a group, a team um, can come on. They can create a look for their T-shirt, and they can order. Uh, I think one shirt, six shirts, 36 shirts, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Whereas Teespring is more as a entrepreneur um, or college student or retiree, right. whatever it might be, I can go on and I can create a sellable concept. So what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a something I'm going to sell and try to make money. So I think my friends would really like um, something that talks about this for our New Year's party mm -hmm. or for this event that's happening in my area. I can create a look. I can set my profit goals and I can sell that and ultimately I get the check at the end of the right. sale if the goal is reached. So yes. it's more of a, a business concept um, for people to sell shirts versus a just order Supply shirt standpoint. Shirt. Right. Now where the My Team Shop um, differs and everybody has their own version depending on the site, yep. this is really a way to just facilitate group orders. So um, these large decorators typically um, have this tool set where they're setting up individual team stores um, for their customers. So if the Albert Gallatin Colonials, who are a local high school here, um, wanted to launch a team store, we can launch a team sale. Everybody that goes to Albert Gallatin, fans, fremily, uh, yeah. Fremily. Yep. Yeah, frenemies. 
you know, frenemies, all those people can go on, they can order their merchandise until the sale closes on January 15th, and mm -hmm. then I batch and process all the orders. So it's really just a tool um, to grow sales. So hopefully that explains the difference. Yeah, and as far as offering performance wear, um, I will have to check. I don't know the answer to that. I believe, I know they're offering uh, tri-blends and all different types of garment blends that way, but I'm not 100% sure on the performance wear, so we would have to check on that and get back to you. Yeah, specifically to Teespring, the others yeah. are doing yeah. performance. Correct. Wear. Definitely. All right, so this is great. This is, I think, what, at Long Beach, uh, when we're at ISS Long Beach mm -hmm. in about 20-some days. Yeah. If you guys are in Florida, I'd love to see it at ASI Orlando here at the beginning of January. But um, Long Beach will celebrate a year of Stalls TV. Yes. And so we've waited 12 months to do this uh, forecasting episode, and it's something we want to continue every year. Um, somewhere else to jump onto trends, because everybody has different insight, mm -hmm. is um, Ted Stahl's blog. It's just tedstall.com. And every year for the past, as long as I can remember, he's been putting out the industry, uh, much like this forecast episode, but you get it more of a, a written format, you get some other photos that you can uh, copy and download, mm -hmm. um, you get a lot of different perspectives. So I'd recommend following that. I'm sure we can, he usually publishes that throughout the month of January. You can expect to see some of that here as well. I would recommend you follow that. Mm -hmm. And then if you're not um, doing it already, if you want to watch the Stalls TV morning show, uh, I pulled up a slide on that, Mondays at 11 a.m., um, Eastern Time every week, except for this week, because um, yes. we were doing this instead, um, you can register and attend the morning show. It's a quick 25-minute max program where we talk about trends impacting the industry, and it's the buzz and news and know-how at the frequency you need it, which means the stuff that happened this past week, mm -hmm. um, we're covering. Um, we're helping to bring in some news from industry magazines and really just keep you up to speed. So if you take 25 minutes, out of your week every Monday morning and attend live. You can ask questions, otherwise it's recorded. Yep. Uh, I want to conclude this with answering any additional questions that are open. And we have no additional questions, so thanks for attending our first Industry Ignited forecasting session, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the Stalls TV Morning Show Monday. Happy New Year.